Hello, my name is Sandra Osborne, and this is part two of a four-part series that helps course writers and course reviewers to effectively create and or review online courses. In this session, the second in the series, we will tackle learning strategies for online courses. The information in this session is developed with course writers and peer reviewers in mind as they go through the task of development or review of courses at University of the West Indies Open Campus. In the first session, you were introduced to the steps in instructional design, and this table illustrates the relationship that exists with the other steps in the development of courses. Please note the cyclical nature of the diagram, which points to continuous improvement of all components. So our learning objectives for this session are as follows. By the end of the session, you will be able to select appropriate learning strategies for using your online course, align your chosen learning strategies with course objectives, and finally, create a matrix of the proposed learning strategies. The first thing to remember about learning strategies is that they must align with the objectives you already developed and the assessments which you will develop. They must all be learner focused and the diagram on screen illustrates the relationship between objectives, assessment and learning activities. As we develop our learning strategies, we must consider the pedagogy for online instruction. Take some time to go through the elements in the diagram. I will point out a few to you. Remember that the student is the main resource. Remember that online courses, the learner is, that the courses are learner-centered. That there must be student-tutor interaction. That there must be feedback. That teaching and learning are entwined. And I will just point out this other one so that, and then you can look through all of these points. Community of learners. There must be collaboration and it must be participatory. So, what are learning strategies? There are ways of learning, there are ways of students engaging with the material. There are ways of students constructing knowledge. And here are some sample online learning strategies for you to engage with. You have individual or group activities, multimedia objects like podcasts or videos. You have discussions in rather in forum or chat or web-based seminars. You have case studies or problem solving activities. We have ref reflective journal entries or mind maps or concept maps. These are just a few of the online learning strategies that you can use. Now, one of the most important things to understand about learning strategies is observed in this cone of learning. If we look at the cone, we will observe which learning strategies are most likely to lead to real learning. And look at the base of the cone and you will see that 90% of what we say or do is what we will remember after two weeks. This is critical as we engage our learners. So we want to engage them by perhaps participating in discussion or giving a talk. We want to ensure that do that they do dramatic presentations, simulations of real experience. These are the things that we know for sure they will remember. There is another consideration that we should make as course developers. 
and I want to introduce you to something called Universal Design for Learning. UDL, as it is called, was first used to ensure inclusiveness for those with special needs. But it is also a set of principles for curriculum development that give all individuals equal opportunities to learn. And it provides a blueprint for creating instructional goals, methods, materials, and assessments that work for everyone. Now notice, instructional goals, methods, and methods is what we are particularly concerned with. So in other words, there is not a single one-size-fits-all solution, but rather flexible approaches that can be customized and adjusted for individual needs. Or in this case, it can even be considered to be group needs. Now there are three main principles associated with universal design. One, that it provides multiple means of representation. Principle two, provide multiple means of action and expression. And principle three, provide multiple means of engagement. For further discussion, I would suggest that you check the following website and that will give you a better understanding of universal design principles. But we will go over the individual principles as they apply to teaching learning. Principle one suggests that you provide multiple means of representation. And by this, we mean that you might use these means of giving information, of sharing information with students, video, PowerPoint slides, charts, podcasts, online lectures, are but a few means of representation. Also, principle two then provide multiple means of action and expression, giving the student ways of sharing their ideas, explaining what they know. And so we have this list, essays, discussions of real issues, research papers that provide solutions to real issues, PowerPoint representation, sorry, presentations that answer searching questions, and you also have movies, videos, and demonstrations. Principle three, provide multiple means of engagement. And by this, we mean that there should be different ways in which the student is engaged in the course. So it may be through group work. It may be through peer commentary. It may be through peer assessment. It may be that you offer engagement with the tutor directly to the student, but multiple means. So that in summary, online learning strategies should do these three things. Align with the course objectives and assessments, fit the pedagogy of online learning, and utilize the three principles of universal learning. Now, here is an opportunity to apply what we have explored in this session. This will help you in your course development. And there are three suggestions as things that you can do as you continue your learning and for feedback. So you can do use the UDL as a guideline for your learning strategies and select what teaching learning strategies you will use in your course. Um, then you can select a learning strategy and create a lesson plan using that particular strategy. And then finally, everybody has to do this one. Create a matrix that includes the objectives you created for the course and the teaching learning strategies that align with the objectives. Note that you receive the sample matrix by email. In the next session, you will look at assessment with Andrew Salandi and you will see the connection between learning strategies and assessment. Post your questions, send them by email, and we will respond as quickly as possible. Thank you for listening and May your course demonstrate all the excitement and vigor of working with 
UDL.